All right, try again. Cogency Rex Chadda. Traplor Ross. The disturbing death of Jay Z's mistress. Jay Z had a mistress. So Jaguar Wright was all this time. Uh, Jaguar Wright was right all this time. Oh my God. Her name just tripped me up. Or was it the star Dizzy? Oh my nigga so evil. Star dog killing my people. Grrr, tapped. Star dog killing me, bro. But yeah, Jay Z had a mistress. So Jaguar Wright, watch real life talk productions. You know what I'm talking about. If you watch those Jaguar Wright interviews on the Blue Couch, you know what I'm talking about. So you have a little history behind the history of Jay Z's mistress or Jay Z's. Uh, so. Let's jump into it, man. Trapler Ross. I don't know what you're getting yourself into, but I'm here for it. <laughs> Disclaimer. The purpose of this video is an educational documentary providing authoritative news reporting on historic events in a journalistic context. All of the opinions in this video are mine alone. Everything in this video has been taken from publicly available sources and any footage used is covered under the doctrine of fair use. We've made every effort to ensure the accuracy of our sources, but I am not responsible for content that third parties publish. Content warning. This video contains themes of violence, death, and gang activity. But every effort has been made to censor this video in accordance with YouTube's advertiser and community guidelines. This video features no violence on screen, no explicit language, and no hateful language. If you want to see extended versions of my videos with much more detail, please visit wow. patreon.com slash trapple ross. We can watch the director's cut for just two bucks. But if you're not interested in that, hit the subscribe button and get ready to hear one of the craziest stories ever told. In recent months, there's been All one right. story in rap culture that has caused I like shockwaves speed up the industry. Interest too. That is, of course, the disturbing tale of the diddler. But memes aside, <laughs> the claims of the rap diddler. mogul P. Diddy's alleged abuse Bro, of the have a for whole... both men and women have led to numerous lawsuits and a federal investigation. The alleged events as in, in his lawsuits what... span decades from his early career to the rap stardom and even his recent years as a billion-dollar businessman. The allegations paint a picture of a truly sickening pattern of behavior taking place behind the scenes throughout year the years. Old? However, this video isn't about Diddy. That investigation's ongoing by both the feds and, of course, me. More updates on that video coming soon. But interestingly, my research into Diddy has led me to uncover some surprising and shocking allegations about another hip-hop mogul. Because according to some rumors, there are even darker secrets hiding amongst America's rap royalty. One of the first to bring these rumors to the Jaguar rap! Listen. When you react to Cogency Reacts, I mean, yeah, when you watch Cogency Reacts and you react to the videos with me, just know, I know what I be talking about, bro. I'm not gonna lead you astray. I literally just said this woman's name 13 times before I started the video. And look at her big, beautiful brown face on my screen. Okay? Just know, Cogency, you know, yeah, 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 the brain have a lot of potency. Yeah? recent times would be the singer-songwriter Jaguar Wright. She used to be around many of the most famous rappers during the 2000s Baby. when her music career was popping off. But in recent years, she, she would end up dropping back-to-back -back bombshell quotables during a series of podcast appearances that took place only a few weeks after Diddy's ex, Cassie Ventura, had filed the initial criminal complaint against Diddy in November 2023, beginning the domino effect of a number of other lawsuits. With Jag's interview landing at the perfect time to capture the internet's interest and rack up millions of views with her. So it's like Jaguar Wright started it? But then, like, Cat Williams just blow up the whole truth-telling thing in January, bro. Explosive quotables. But while everyone was focused on her airing out Diddy's dirty laundry, many people missed the fact that towards the end of her blockbuster yeah, podcast, she used to always expose, talk about Jay -Z. she turned her aim towards another yeah. one of hip-hop's most I remember famous everything icons, she said. Revealing I remember everything. There's only one person who is worse than Diddy. Yep. You want to know what makes Diddy being publicly shamed like this so, so left? What's that? Sean Carter is worse. Indeed, according to some rumors, the next rap superstar to fall from grace would be none other than the one who many consider to be the best rapper dead or alive. Never. Sean Corey Carter. I don't know who thinks that. Probably just old niggas from New York that still wear fitted caps on their bald ass head that don't take care of their kids. But nobody with actual sense is saying Jay-Z is the best rapper dead or alive. No one has ever said. No one with an actual inch of 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 actual critique of music will actually say that better known as jay-z According to these rumors, all the way back in 2011, right when Jay's longtime partner Beyonce revealed that she was pregnant with her first child, Blue Ivy, a woman named Kathy White, who had been reported to have been having an affair with the rapper mogul about a year earlier, would suddenly pass away after reportedly suffering a sudden brain aneurysm under what some claim 
to be very suspicious circumstances. But what's even more shocking is the claim that the resurgence of this story in the aftermath of the Diddy saga is allegedly no coincidence, as Diddy's ex-wife Kim Porter would also die suddenly after a bout of pneumonia, which has also been the subject of suspicion and theories that perhaps there was more to the sudden illness. But even more shocking, Jaguar Wright claims that Diddy himself may have actual proof that Kathy White's death had foul play involved, suggesting that Diddy may well be ready to expose that information to take Jay-Z down with him. To get to the bottom of these wild claims, in this video we'll be breaking down the entire story between Jay and his alleged mistress, the strange connection between Jay-Z and Diddy, the woman's tragic and untimely death at the prime of her life in the early 2010s, and the shocking rumours that perhaps Jay-Z, or even Beyonce, might have had something to do with this tragic end. This is from the reaction I'm getting from the public about Jay-Z and Beyonce. How long have they been dating? If you put, like, if you from the hood, mm -hmm. and you got, let's say, a thousand people who lived in the project, if you got a thousand people, like, in your business, mm -hmm. it's gonna put a strain on your relationship that you would never, ever believe. You took an unprecedented stand to fight for this man. I mean, to fight for him and to put it all out there. What is it about this narrative so special that you would fight this hard to, to say? Fight this hard? Tonight? Tonight. Well, it's my soulmate. It's the person I love. Yo, this is scary. This is scary. This is scary. This is scary. Spooky times. Look at that, look at that spooky time. Tonight's biggest moment, of course, was Beyonce's pregnancy revelation. Kathy White's true killer is going to be unveiled, and it's not a man. Just days after video. When Kanye West says Jay-Z has murderers, I believe he's talking about people who kill Cassie. Sit about my head, just call me. Talk to me like a man. It's Cassie Pop. A lawsuit in New York City against Diddy. It's the sixth lawsuit alleging abuse by Combs. Video captured on multiple cameras shows Combs assaulting his then-girlfriend. Sean Carter is just as bad as the Diddler. Yo, no way, bro. No way, bro. When it comes to the debate about the best rapper no. ever alive, everyone has their favorite. Jay-Z is regularly named as the top contender. But when it comes to the richest rapper in the world, there can only be one winner, with Forbes estimating that Jay-Z indeed leads the pack with a staggering $2.5 billion fortune. In fact, Jay-Z actually took that top spot from Diddy himself in 2018. But besides his spot as the richest rapper in the world, and one of the leading contenders when it comes to the greatest MC to ever grace the mic, along with his impeccable catalog, Jay-Z has become known for another prestigious achievement. His long-lasting relationship with arguably one of the greatest female musicians of our time, Beyonce. Beyonce, Giselle Knowles, or Knowles Carter as they're both officially known after their 2008 merger, I mean marriage, is undoubtedly one of the most successful and beloved singers it's a merger, ever, it's holding a merger. titles like the most awarded artist in Grammy history, as well as reportedly being well on her way to becoming a billionaire in her own right. Jay-Z and Beyonce have been together for literally decades, with their relationship reportedly starting in the early 2000s, when Beyonce was apparently 19 and Jay about 32. Now, there's nothing wrong with a consensual age gap relationship, however the beginnings of this relationship have been suspect to salacious speculation, with numerous articles considering whether Jay-Z actually groomed Beyonce, with these rumours fueled further by a clip that circulated with Beyonce claiming that Jay taught her how to be a woman. You taught me so many things. I was 20 years old when we first started dating. You taught me how to be a woman. Now that's certainly not proof of anything untoward, but the origins mm. of the relationship have indeed led many to give a side eye to Jay in kind of the same way as Diddy. But clearly the relationship between Jay and Bay is genuine and it's continued to flourish for over a decade as Beyonce got older. And eventually their power couple status would be truly solidified in the aftermath of their first musical collaboration, the track 03 Bonnie and Clyde, a catchy love song featuring both artists with a power couple referring to each other as boyfriend and girlfriend on the hook. Although at the time, the couple would still not publicly admit the relationship to the tabloids as this 
this couple would ultimately become known for keeping their private lives largely to themselves. But ever since the couple went public, they've actually gone from strength to strength, truly proving to the world the true definition of a power couple succeeding in all areas of life beyond anyone's wildest dreams. Not only have they been unbelievably successful in their careers, both artistically and financially, both independently and together, but as a unit, they've also been blessed with three healthy children. And their relationship has survived the test of time better than almost any other couple in the cutthroat world of entertainment, where relationships and even marriages are commonly over in a matter of weeks, months, or in some cases, even just days. However, it's not all been rainbows and butterflies, as their relationship has also been embroiled in many controversies throughout the years, mainly revolving around rumours of infidelity. From the rumours of Jay-Z cheating on Beyonce with none other than Rihanna in the mid-2000s, a rumour which would actually later turn out to be completely fabricated by Rihanna's then-manager, Jonathan Hay, in an apparent attempt to boost her media coverage. But then you've got the mysterious, violent outburst that Beyonce's sister Solange had towards Jay in an elevator during the 2014 Met Gala after party, which many have thought to have been the result of Solange actually finding out about Jay's infidelity. Now, by the way, if you want to know more about that particular situation, you can check out my 2019 deep dive where I break down the entire thing. But also, in 2014, female rapper named Liv would also come out with an entire diss track dedicated to Beyonce and Jay-Z, where she would essentially claim that Jay had tried to get it on with her, but she wasn't going for it. In fact, What? And Jay-Z, where she would essentially- Sir, Miss Carter. I ain't falling to his feet. He ain't expect that jigger man. I don't care if you rap. You got it. He claimed that Jay had tried to get it on with her, but she wasn't going for it. In fact, throughout their relationship, Jay-Z has been accused of having numerous mistresses, some of these even being other artists. Rumors have even circulated claiming that Jay-Z is actually pulling a Drake and hiding a child or two. Now, all of these rumors would culminate in Beyonce dropping her highly acclaimed 2016 album, Lemonade, which many argue was actually worthy of the 2017 Album of the Year Grammy, pretty much the only Grammy that Beyonce still does not have, with even the winner that year, Adele, seemingly agreeing. But anyway, the album Lemonade and the associated music videos included numerous lyrics and skits that seemed to reference her man being unfaithful, with this theme largely carrying over the entire album. But one line in particular would rise above them all, where Bay appeared to refer to Jay's side piece by the infamous nickname Becky, Becky with, with the Good, the good hair. hair. And while it's never been confirmed who exactly was the woman or women that Jay had allegedly been intimate with, many would point their fingers towards one person in particular, the fashion designer Rachel Roy, who is also the ex-wife of Jay's former longtime business partner Dame Dash. Reportedly, only hours after Beyonce's release, Roy would post a cryptic message to her Instagram about truths coming to light, whilst also stating what appears to be a clear nod to the song, writing, good hair, don't care. Now, this theory would be further bolstered by the fact that the gossip media had already in 2014 spread the rumour that Solange's infamous elevator flip-out was in fact preceded by an argument with Rachel Roy. However, Roy would later make a statement denying these allegations. But another of course you would. for Jay-Z's possible mistress of course would be would. the singer Rita Ora, who was first discovered and signed by Jay to his Rock Nation management in 2009, with the rumours of the Rita affair being seemingly started by the simple fact that she posted a picture of herself wearing a bikini with lemon patches, along with a necklace that had the letter J not long before the release of Beyonce's Lemonade album, with this seemingly being proof enough. Yo, people are so conspiracy driven. You guys will connect things that aren't even there because she has on a bikini with a lemon patch or lemons on it and a necklace with a J on it. Wow to send Beyonce's crazed fan base, or the Beehive, after her. Now, the drama around Jay and Beyonce's relationship would eventually lead to Jay dropping his own album, 444, in 2017, where he would respond to the rumours of infidelity, seemingly admitting and taking responsibility for his cheating, and actually apologising to the Queen Bee. Jay would also give a few carefully selected and phrased interviews, opening up about their relationship problems, generally keeping things equally as vague as the lyrics on their songs. The other freedom I see in the album is just a freedom for couples who have gone through something. You know, it's amazing. You know, it's almost a cliche, you know, the celebrity couple, you know, they get together, they break up, you know, like who else are they gonna go out with? But for some reason, you took an unprecedented stand to fight for this marriage. I mean, to fight for it mm -hmm. and to put it all out there. What is it about this marriage that's so special that you would fight this hard to, to save it? Well, it's my soulmate, it's the person I love, you know, and you and you you can be in love with someone. You can love someone, and you're not. And if you haven't experienced love, and you don't understand it, and you don't have the tools to move forward, then you're gonna have complications. Period. And if you you can either address it or you can pretend until it blows up at some point. And you know, for us, we chose to for, fight for our love, for our family, to give our kids a different outcome. You know, to break that that cycle for black men and women. You know, just to see a different outcome. Like you were saying, it's not this. 
celebrity couple. We, we were never a celebrity couple. We were a couple who just happened to be celebrities. Since then, Jay and Beyonce's relationship has seemingly survived these tough times, and the couple appears Fair to enough. be doing perhaps better than ever. My husband, my rock, my best friend, I love you. My three beautiful children who continue to be my inspiration and my biggest blessing. However, if the wildest internet rumors are to be believed, things could soon be getting very rocky for Jay, or even both of them. Because as the lawsuits and the rumor mill around Diddy keep intensifying, shockwave is also starting to spread to the people close to him, with one of those people being Jay-Z. Yo. Fine. <clears throat> no, this look like the man them posing with their girlfriends. Dame Dash posing with her as his girl. Diddy posing with J-Lo as his girl. And Jay-Z posing with Aaliyah as his girl. This is Aaliyah, right? Shockwave is also starting to spread to the people close to him, with one of those people being Jay-Z, who's actually been a close friend of Diddy for a very long time, their very friendship long. going back decades to when they were both just starting their careers in the 90s. At the heart of these new accusations is a woman named Kathy White, who some claim to have been Jay's first mistress during his long relationship with Beyonce, and a woman whose untimely death in 2011 is claimed by some to be just the tip of the iceberg of the dark exploits of rap's ultimate power couple. Known by many names, Kathy White, Kathy Michelle White, Kathy Koreana White, or Lil Kathy, Corina Hun, or Cory, to friends and family, according to her obituary, she was born in the Fort Polk military base in Louisiana, which has since been renamed Fort Johnson. This military base has its own hospital for the army personnel called the Bain Jones Army Community Hospital. Kathy's grandfather was a World War II veteran, and perhaps the military gene ran in the family. However, sometime later, her family seemingly moved to Norfolk, Virginia, which is located in the southeasternmost point of Virginia in the so-called Tidewater region. Known for its major bays and rivers that give access to and harbor from the Atlantic Ocean, this is why the area is also home to numerous US Army bases, which may have something to do with the fact that her family moved there in the first place. Norfolk is also part of the so-called Southampton Roads region, which consists of several mid-sized cities that border each other, including Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Portsmouth, and Suffolk, as well as having direct bridge access to the other side of the James River, where there are more similar-sized cities like Newport News and Hampton. This area, creating the Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Newport News metro area, has a combined population of almost 2 million people. But despite the area having a sizable population and being one of the largest metro areas in Virginia, many still describe it as having a small, small town, town feel. feel. There, Kathy would seemingly attend the Indian River High School in the city of Chesapeake, and eventually she would graduate in 2000 from the Maury High School in Norfolk, before going on to study and graduate in 2004 from the esteemed Howard University. So she come from a small DC, area. Known for being feel. one of the top historically black universities, also known as HBCUs, in okay. the country. Ranked by the National Science Foundation as the top producer of African American undergraduates who later earned science and engineering doctoral degrees. And it's That's from her cool. time in Howard that one of the few videos about her online can still be found, filmed during the university's fashion show in 2001. And this showed that Kathy was seemingly a confident girl, not afraid of the limelight. Needless to say that after graduating cool. from an esteemed school like Howard, Kathy's future was looking very promising. And afterwards, she would eventually end up working in the field of publishing. Although at this point in 2024, what that exactly entailed is still not very clear. But according to gossip blogs from the early 2010s, she contributed to various online publications, as well as eventually having her own PR firm, White Label PR. Seeming providing services relating to the fitness and beauty industries on the side. Kathy's career in publishing would eventually take her far away from the small town feel of Norfolk all the way to the mm. other side of the country, where she appeared to settle in the city where every publicist in her field dreams of making it, yeah, Los Angeles. Although it's not sense. clear when exactly this move happened, what does seem clear is that eventually Kathy would not only settle in LA, but thrive there, making friends with influential people within the LA celebrity, socialite, and jet set circuits, people such as Nikki Chu, celebrity interior designer, reality TV star and host, actress okay. and photographer, Chanoa Maxwell, and most famously, reality TV star host and model Claudia Jordan, who had a long career in entertainment, first participating in numerous beauty pageant competitions in the 90s, and then making her break in the industry by being a model <laughs> on The Price is Right, as well as deal or no deal game shows during the early and mid 2000s, performing in the latter one with none other than the infamous actor Meghan Markle, who would later end up marrying the real Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Prince Harry. Isn't that crazy? You literally stood there and opened a case and smiled and waved. So smile and wave, boys. Kowalski! Smile and wave. And you went up in life. You went up in society. Imagine if... <laughs> Imagine if I could just stand somewhere and open a briefcase and smile and wave, boys. And I can end up marrying a princess. 
of a country or 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 the daughter of an oligarch or something bro we do not live by the same rules and no one can tell me otherwise no one now this is a story all about how my life got flipped and upside down in the late 2000s kathy's close friend claudia would begin to appear on numerous reality and other tv shows such as donald trump's the celebrity apprentice as well as being a host at jamie fox's popular serious xm radio channel the foxhole that name's terrible God, the foxhole in the, <laughs> the 2010s foxhole. she also appeared on Why, the Times of atlanta reality tv show and most recently she competed in nbc's deal or no deal island game show in 2024 as well as being a host on the fox soul streaming yes, network we know however Claudia unlike Jordan, her friends who many strive to be in front of the cameras kathy white appeared to be mainly focused on working behind the scenes and playing her role as a publicist and therefore there aren't too many traces of her left online from the more established media sources a couple pictures friends, with one of those few sources being photos mean. taken during appearances at a few different socialite events however this may have eventually changed because while kathy was seemingly mostly working behind the scenes in the entertainment industry it does seem that in the background she did also have some other ambitions as she was apparently a trained singer going by the artist name coriana or coriana hun and she would even appear to have registered her own company focused on music called the Coriana Han Music Group while living in LA. There's also an internet movie database entrance made for her under the name Coriana Han, where her alleged manager describes her as a successful model, screenwriter, and a talented singer-songwriter. And indeed, right. some of her modeling photos can still be found circulating online. Interestingly, this page mm. also lists her birthplace as New Orleans, very Louisiana, attractive. not Fort Polk, as well as listing her birth year as 1985 instead of the 1982 found on her obituary. Perhaps she thought saying she was from a more famous city and a younger age might have been assets for her career in entertainment. And there's okay. even some credit that she has on the page from a few movies and TV shows she appeared in. One of these being a 2009 movie called Deep in the Valley, which is undoubtedly one of the most 2000s style comedy movies ever made, with Kathy playing one of the dozens of scantily clad women making an appearance in the film, along yeah. with some good company like Kim Kardashian, who at this point in the late 2000s <laughs> had only just begun her unbelievable rise to the top of the entertainment world, following her unforgettable performance in the 2007 box office smash Kim Kardashian Superstar, co-starring Ray J. But anyway, for Kathy White, aka Coriana <laughs> Hun, the last role listed on the site is from a 2010 hood movie titled Nobody Smiling, where she had a short one scene oh role. God. But despite these tidbits of information about Kathy's ambitions in front of the camera, there's surprisingly little left online to show that side of her. On social media, on the other hand, particularly Twitter, there are still many photos and mentions of Kathy still floating around, despite her eventually deleting all of her socials for a period of time due to the infamous events that would end up transpiring in the lead up to her untimely death. One capture that's left on her old Twitter on the way back machine shows her describing herself as a lifestyle, fitness, beauty, PR pro, self styled fashionista and beauty expert who loves life, friends, family, and God. With some of her tweets even implying that she might have been personally connected to celebrities like the Kardashians. There are also many mentions of Kathy on Twitter by her friends, these painting a picture of a 20-something Kathy living her best life in the City of Angels. The kind of life that she had likely dreamt of as a kid growing up in Norfolk, like whining and dining at the hippest restaurants, shopping luxury fashion, and building a collection of designer purses, and of course going to the industry events and parties with her popular and influential friendship circle. With two of her friends, Nikki and Claudia, she would seemingly become so close while living it up in LA that they would playfully begin to refer to themselves as the trilogy. But besides LA, <laughs> there was seemingly one other place where Kathy yeah, and her friends were often frequent. A name for them group. This appeared to be particularly the case with Claudia, who would often post about her visiting the Sin City either for work or for pleasure, Sin often City was for both. Interestingly, it appeared that Jay-Z too was somewhat frequenting Angel Vegas around this same time. And Claudia appeared to be at least to some degree connected with Jay-Z through mutual friends, such as the comedy powerhouse Marlon Wayans, and she would sometimes mention on Twitter about her plans of going to Jay-Z's concerts or parties while she was in Vegas. And it would be in May 2009 when she would allegedly attend one such party, together with Kathy White, sparking rumors about her, Jay, Yo, why and did even he Diddy that still raise eyebrows AI on the internet voice. to this very day. <clears throat> What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, eh? On May the 2nd, okay. 2009, Filipino boxing legend Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao was set to face the British boxing legend Ricky Hatton. Now, my dad Ooh. and older brothers were boxing obsessives, and I remember staying up late to watch this fight as a teenager. But little did I know the madness that was going on behind the scenes. Now, this fight would take place in the famous MGM Grand Arena in Las Vegas, and many A-list celebrities had gathered in the city for this fight, including Jay-Z, his good friend P. Diddy, as well as the singer Cassie Ventura. Now, at this time, Kathy White hadn't yet joined Twitter, but based on the tweets of her good friend Claudia Jordan... <laughs> yeah, I look like that uncle. <laughs> That's on the block in Philly. That's just... It appeared that they had also arrived to Las Vegas. Sorry, I need to focus. I'm so sorry, bro. 
I'm sorry. Just to join in on the action. <laughs> Around noon on the day of the fight, Claudia would tweet how she had been jogging and was about to hit the pool, spending a chill day in the lead up to the big party <clears throat> night. The fight between Pacquiao and Hatton would end up being one for the ages, with Pac-Man winning the match and knocking out Ricky Hatton in the second round, much to mine and my dad's disappointment, with what would later be awarded as the best knockout of the year by The Ring magazine. Now that, that hurt me deep, to be honest with you. But anyway, after that fight, the celebrity crowd would gather oh, at numerous after parties that were likely taking place all over yeah, Las Anthony Vegas. Joshua one of these parties being and the popular Fury. town nightclub in the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Harry Reid? Yo, so all my uncle of airport and never tell me. This party being attended by none other than Jay-Z and P. Diddy, with both stars attending the party in full-blown A-list celebrity mode, with sunglasses inside as if they weren't two of the most famous people on the planet. Also in attendance was Claudia Jordan and her crew, which included Kathy White, who was wearing an easily identifiable pinkish, purplish, magenta-coloured dress, and a professional photographer named Denise Trussello was also present, seemingly there as official press, capturing pictures of the event, with her photos showing that the event had celebrities from all walks of entertainment, including people like the actor David Arquette, most famously known for the Scream movie series, as well as the and Mel B from the Britpop icons the Spice Girls. And surprisingly, also in attendance was even the former hip-hop mogul of Death Row fame, Blood Gang member, and the rap game's top billy <laughs> from Bob King, Sugar Knight. Now, Sugar Knight being in the you same You had to add the blood shit, shit nigga. It's insane by itself when you consider the long-standing rumours that Suge may well have been involved in the murder of Jay and Diddy's good friend the notorious B.I.G., aka Biggie Smalls. But then again, the story of Diddy and Suge goes much deeper than you could possibly imagine, and all that's for another video. But anyway, I'm, it would I'm turn sure. out that the photos of the party taken by Trucello would eventually begin to play a part in sparking rumours about an affair between Jay-Z and Kathy White, with these photos showing Kathy and Claudia dancing together near P. Diddy and Jay-Z, with Kathy clearly having the time of her life. She can be seen holding an entire champagne bottle in one hand whilst her friends are toasting with glasses. In one of these pictures, Kathy can even be seen talking, or more likely hollering, at either another woman next to Jay or Jay himself, who is also turned towards her direction. In other pictures, Kathy's friend Nikki Chu can also be seen very close to Jay-Z having a direct conversation, which likely means that that group of women had at least some kind of relationship with him, which is probably why they were allowed to stay so close to Jay-Z and yeah, P. Diddy facts, in the first facts, place. Facts, there were also facts. videos shot by fans during the night that were then posted stupid. to YouTube where Nicki stupid. also appears to be very close to Jay-Z and Diddy. And yet another picture, this time seemingly taken by simply another party-goer, Kathy can this time be seen much closer to Jay, still with other people between them, with Kathy and her friend's eyes aiming straight towards the camera. Now these pictures alone didn't prove anything untoward had happened between Kathy and Jay, however the connection had now been made. They'd been seen drunkenly partying together and the photos had been snapped for the whole world to see. But initially nobody had any idea about about you what can't might have been going hide, the scenes. In fact, it was over a year later <coughs> that these pictures would suddenly get some attention after claims about Kathy and Jay's Ready affair would hit the internet, with these rumours unfortunately changing Kathy White's life forever. We're gonna find you and make a documentary. After being snapped at a Las Vegas nightclub <laughs> with Jay-Z and P. Diddy, Kathy White went back to her LA lifestyle and for a time moved on with life as normal. The rest of 2009, Kathy White would likely stay living the good life in Los Angeles and at the end of the year she would actually join Twitter, helping us get a better understanding of her life going into 2010. It seems All that right. she was mostly staying in Los Angeles and doing the usual things like working, going out partying with her friends in mansions and at pool parties, attending events like basketball games and concerts, with at least one of these perhaps even being a Jay-Z concert. She would also All travel right. with her friends, seemingly going to places like Paris France, yeah, there were also a changes body. happening in Kathy's life, as in the summer of 2010, posts would surface on social media indicating that Kathy was actually moving away from LA and back to okay. the East Coast. But Kathy certainly wasn't heading back to Norfolk, but instead to the biggest metropolis in America and Jay-Z's home city, New York. And it also Ooh. seemed that she had received some big deal work-related offer with tweets discussing some kind of celebratory dinner and how she was about to blow up, with one post saying that she was just about to sign mm. some kind of big deal. But unfortunately, mm. the good news wouldn't last for long, because by the end of August, the rumour about Kathy Kathy and Jay-Z's affair would finally hit the internet. Hold well, on, I was just about to say, you know, as soon as him start, you know, get around him, him should start get the deal and, you know, kind of say, oh, okay, okay, okay. First posted by an LA gossip blog, Diary of a Hollywood Street King, a blog ran by a man called Jackie Jasper, real name Sean Merrick, who was a Canadian-American former rapper whose career in music began in the early 90s, when he would make some impact nationally in Canada with his single Pimp of the Microphone, rapping under the name HDV. And it seems that Merrick was actually pimping much more than just microphones, because he would allegedly also do a stint in a Toronto jail for the real deal. He would also be part of a Toronto-based dance music group called Dance Appeal, who would go on to win the iHeartRadio Much Music Video Award for Best Dance Music Video of the Year in 1991, with their 
music video for the song Can't Repress the Chords. Merrick would then later move to America, where he would change his rap name to H-Bomb and also get into producing, collaborating with many notable artists like Ice-T and Coolio, as well as with Cool okay. Keith, who he would create a rap group with called Seventh Veil. With their Seventh last project Vail. in 2008, including such legends as Rick James, Corrupt, Ike Turner, and Snoop Dogg. Now, it's okay. safe to say that Merrick had some real connections in the world of entertainment, but since his never heard music of him. wasn't seemingly moving much anymore, he yeah. would likely decide to capitalize on his contacts in another way, co-starting the Diary of a Hollywood Street King blog, often shortened to just HSK, writing for the blog under the pseudonym Jackie Jasper from 2009. With all this happening only months before that night in Vegas, when Kathy and her friends had been captured on camera at Jay-Z and P. Diddy's party, the blog would focus heavily on sensationalism, painting a highly oh scandalous God. image of the things going on behind the scenes in Hollywood. Oh Interestingly, it seems that one of the first articles on the blog Maybe because he knew what was on going on in Hollywood, just like Kathy, titled Gossip on a Gossip Girl. Now the blog had even uh -huh. gone after Kathy's friend Claudia several times before the story on Kathy and Jay. They even edited public. her face. HSK would call out Claudia Jordan as a gold digger, an opportunist, and a home wrecker for allegedly pursuing men that were already in relationships. Oh the my HSK God. blog was particularly venomous and seemed to indicate some sort of bitterness towards Hollywood socialites, or arguably Ooh. just women in general. Headlines calling Claudia Jordan washed up and wanted by no man definitely yeah. gave off some slight incel vibes, but anyway, yeah, whilst it's extremely sensational, it must also be noted <clears> that the blog Like him give off a red pill advice bro so you see red pill is not new bro this happened in early 2000s what was red pill in early 2000s that never exists him just there in the room and i just saw certain people steer better has at least once been at the very forefront of breaking a huge celebrity story. For example, in 2014, it reportedly became the first source to publicize Charlie Sheen's HIV diagnosis well over a year before the actor would finally come out and admit it himself. Also, in Kathy's case, HSK would claim that their story was an exclusive that they had received from a source directly close to Kathy, claiming that Kathy's relationship with Jay-Z went back all the way to before him and Beyonce were even married, and the source would also claim that they had first learned about the affair between Kathy and Bro, this guy is still relevant to this day, you know. I didn't even know that this guy was uh, this guy was alive back then. I mean, obviously, but I didn't know that this guy was. Bro, I thought this guy was a social media guy, you know. I thought Jason Lee was a social media don that got famous in like COVID time. Bro, this guy, bro, this guy is literally pictured with the mistress that the documentary is about. So why we don't just call Jason? Trap lord, call Jason. He has like 700,000 million followers. Call him. He has the info. I'm sure of it. Call him. What does Jason Lee think about this video? I need to find out. And Jay from her friend. Jason Lee, who went on to end up being perhaps best known for being the founder of Hollywood Unlocked, another celebrity gossip site essentially doing the same thing as HSK, but in the modern era, as well as appearing on the TV show Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. And Jason Lee's exemplary contributions to gossip journalism include getting the first-hand scoop on Queen Elizabeth's death an impressive seven months before it actually happened. There's being first, and then there's that. Anyway, back to Kathy White. No, 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 what do you mean, what do you mean, what do you mean? Oh, you know somebody dead seven months before it happened, what do you mean? Yeah, I need further explanation for that. I don't understand that Bob one. would also claim that he got the rumor from Corey's friend Jason Lee, and that several close associates of Jay-Z had confirmed the story was true. But the muckraking wouldn't end there, as the blog would also claim that Claudia muckraking. Jordan was often bitching about her friend Kathy White behind her back, even claiming that Claudia was jealous of Kathy for getting into a relationship with Jay-Z, reprinting apparent swipes from Claudia, where she claimed that Kathy has $100,000 in bags, $200,000 in shoes, but lives in a messy one-bed apartment, as well as claiming she can't believe Claudia is getting richer men than her and even suggesting that her cat smells bad. Anyway, while the online celebrity gossip culture in 2010 was nothing like it is now with modern social media, even back then in the blog era, that story would make a huge impact. With sites like the popular gossip discussion forum Lipstick Alley. Guys, I just learned a new word. Muckraking is the action of searching out and publicizing a scandal about famous people. Oh my gosh, I did not know that. So the muckraking continues. Claudia is getting richer men than her, and even suggesting that her cat smells bad. Anyway, while the online celebrity gossip culture in 2010 was nothing like it is now, with modern social media, even back then in the blog era, that story would make a huge impact. With sites like the popular gossip discussion forum Lipstick Alley soon starting a thread on the rumor, which would quickly gain dozens of replies. Which, based on these replies, was clearly exceptional at the time. With posts claiming that the forum hadn't been this active since Obama won the election, Kathy would seemingly find out about the blog post rather quickly, would allegedly go on to message Jasper personally, 
family, which he would gleefully post on his blog as an update, sharing the message that demanded he take down the post and claiming she plans to sue him for copyright infringement. Kathy would also immediately go on to delete her Twitter and Facebook accounts, but in the eyes of many, this would only make her look more guilty. Yeah, that looks good. Claiming that it must be true if the mistress deleted her Twitter. It would also do that little to stop the online sleuths from doing their own investigations, and soon they would find the pictures of Kathy and Claudia at Jay Z and Diddy's party, adding even more fuel to the fire. With Jackie Jasper of Hollywood Street King himself even commenting on the thread, responding to criticism by the online sleuths, who clowned him, saying that they found more evidence than he had, despite his claims of being an industry insider. And soon Jasper would post the pictures from the forum on his own blog, as well as repeating the question of why would Kathy delete her socials if she was innocent. However, there yeah, was one facts. glaring hole in Jasper's story that seemingly even online sleuths on Lipstick Alley would fail to realize. Because what he says right here is kind of true. If it's not true, it should just roll off the shoulder. Like, hey, they think you're messing with hope. Oh, no, nah, I'm not. You know what I mean? But she immediately deleted her Twitter and Facebook, you know? And she's a PR person. Like, surely you'd want to keep your social stuff, you know, if you... Or maybe they didn't understand this, the, the, the purpose of social media. Because in the original blog post, Jasper would claim that according to his source, the meeting of Jay and Kathy happened in September 2009, during a night of a boxing match between Floyd Mayweather and Juana Marquez. This fight took place on September the 19th at the MGM Grand Arena in Las Vegas, that very same arena where Manny Pacquiao and Ricky Hatton had fought some months oh, really? earlier on May the 2nd. Kathy's friend Claudia would indeed be in Vegas that night, as okay, she would be again. set to host a fight night after party at a freshly opened nightclub near the Las Vegas Strip. The next day, Claudia would even post a picture of herself and her friends in Vegas, but Kathy would be nowhere but what makes Jasper's version of the events truly impossible is the fact that Jay-Z himself was nowhere near Las Vegas at this time, as he would be doing two consecutive shows at the Wembley Stadium in London, in uh, England, on both the 18th and 19th of September, together right. with Coldplay and other artists. All Additionally, right. on Sunday, September the 20th, he would do an interview with a UK radio station, showing that the entire weekend he would in fact stay firmly on the ground in the United Kingdom. And if that's not Lux. enough proof, Jay-Z had in fact likely stayed in the UK for the entire month of September, as he would tour all over the country with Coldplay. At the very okay. least, this mistake in Jasper's reporting appears to show that his sources may not have been as reliable as he was making them seem. And yeah. confusing which boxing fight they met at, as well as getting the timeline wrong, arguably destroys his credibility and means that we can't really trust any of his outrageous yeah. claims. But nevertheless, Jasper would continue on reporting about Kathy and Jay's alleged affair, doubling down on his factually incorrect information. Incorrectly <laughs> maintaining incorrect. that their meeting had indeed happened around the September 19th boxing match between Mayweather and Marquise, with his source now doubling down on the lies, claiming that Jay-Z had been buying expensive designer items for Kathy to wear during that that night when Jay-Z was in fact in the United Kingdom the entire month. He would also claim that Jay-Z had taken Claudia out gambling at the famous Bellagio Casino and seemingly fabricating a story about Claudia's friends circling them to make sure nobody saw. A great way to cover the fact that no pictures exist of this meeting because it never actually <laughs> happened. Okay, Jay -Z never happened. However, besides Jasper's Hollywood Street King and a few other gossip blogs, none of the more reputable tabloid media outlets like TMZ would seemingly bite when it came to posting this rumor. And so life would seemingly, eventually, go back to normal for Kathy White, who would then in the beginning of 2011 return to Twitter under a new username, I am White Label PR, with this move possibly reflecting the fact that she had now started her own PR firm, however this time she would keep her account private, likely only accepting her closest friend circle to see her posts. But what we do know is that she was now living in New York, having completed the relocation she had planned months ago, with one of the people tweeting at her about New York being the comedian DeRay Davis from the hey, Barbershop ex. movies, who would interestingly LOL, call her this? his ex. It seemed that Kathy was enjoying her new life in the Big Apple movies, who would Theory, like, what kind of tweet is that to publicly just send? Oh, you know, everybody's going to see that. Like, what? Can, why? I don't care who who me, who you are to me. How long ago the relationship was? Don't ever refer to me as hey ex. I will block and delete you. Or well, at least we're cool and cordial. Don't let me regret regret my decision. You mean hey ex? Shut up would interestingly call her his ex. It seemed that Kathy was enjoying her new life in the Big Apple and her life was on the right path. However, Jackie Jasper at Hollywood Street King was not planning on leaving her alone and he would make yet another blog post about her. This time, he based hater, on his alleged source in New York who would claim that Kathy had gotten involved with some shady people and businesses. Now, this salty post had a real tinge of woman hatred to it as he branded her Jay-Z's mistress, lamenting yeah. her rebranding to a fitness expert and claiming her only skill is shaking her butt and claiming she's using health products linked to a former mobster and adult entertainment mogul. Jasper would also also claimed that Kathy's move to NYC was due to her affair with Jay-Z getting outed. Which would the thing is though, like, you sometimes don't watch how they say, just think about what they're saying. And, you know what I'm saying? Just take the emotion out of it for yourself. Because that's what I do. Uh, yeah, he's being kind of catty and being 
a light skin nigga yeah whatever but let me just listen to what he's saying let me listen to the information that he's presenting to me first before i just dismiss what he's saying because of his attitude and his emotion behind it you know what i mean because certain people just naturally emotional and grow a certain way you know what i mean so they're gonna just present information in that certain way so you can't really judge them by that i'm here for the information and that's not like this is it it's not too far out of the imagination because a lot of fitness products are placebos bro they just give off the effect that a lot of healthcare products a lot of you know when you go to the health store and you see all of these millions of bottles on the shelves and everything in the bags and a lot of those stuff are placebos bro so saying that she's a fake fitness expert that's selling placebo fitness products is not far-fetched you know so i'm not going to dismiss this just because he's a light-skinned nigga and you know he's being catty jasper would also claim that kathy's move to nyc was due to her affair with jay-z getting outed which would once again appear to be simply factually incorrect as kathy had clearly planned her move to new york city months before the alleged affair with jay-z had been publicized by jasper at the end of august 2010 but strangely while the timeline was certainly a mess and hollywood street king was twisting facts and falsehoods to paint the desired narrative clearly there had been a connection between jay-z and kathy and they had indeed partied together alongside p diddy and claudia jordan in las vegas now that was out there for the whole world to see but combining that with the false narratives being painted by these blogs, Kathy White's reputation was seemingly in tatters. She'd been labelled as Jay-Z's mistress, and the only evidence were paparazzi photos from one party and a bunch of anonymous sources that were demonstrably lying. Unfortunately, the truth would only matter so much, as only about a month after this blog, Kathy would meet her untimely end under incredibly suspicious circumstances. A month? A month after the story, boss? On the 28th of August 2011, the celebrity tabloids were buzzing as Beyonce would step onto the red carpet during the MTV Music Awards holding her tummy, something she would later also do at the end of her performance during the award show. This was ultimately the announcement of her pregnancy with her and Jay-Z's first baby, Blue Ivy. The news about Queen Bee's pregnancy would be so popular that it would actually break a record on Twitter, getting the most tweets per second ever at the time. But unfortunately, as Bay and Jay celebrated the news of bringing a new life into the world, another life was about to be lost. A few days after the MTV Awards, on the early morning morning hours of September the 1st, at around 3am New York time, or about 12am Los Angeles time, Kathy White's good friend Shanoa Maxwell would tweet to her other good friend Nikki Chu, telling her to call her as soon as possible, as there was an emergency concerning one of their friends. Then, later that morning, her friends would confirm the sad news, that Kathy White had died almost exactly one year after the rumour about her and Jay-Z's relationship had started. Oh, one year. one year! One year, one year, one year, one year. But what was the one month thing that he said? Oh, one month later after... Wait, hold on. Let me just go back to this one quick second. Let me just hear what he says. So I don't ...together this. alongside P. Diddy and Claudia Jordan in Las Vegas. Now, that was out there for the whole world to see. But combining that with the Jay-Z's mistress and the only ever lying, unfortunately, the truth from one party and a bunch of anonymous sources that were demonstrably lying. Unfortunately, the truth would only matter so much, as only about a month after this blog, Kathy would meet her untimely oh, end. Oh, a month after the blog. So the blog was late to the... Oh, okay. No, after... You know, gathering all the news and everything. Okay, so everything was bubbling for a year. And then a month after that specific blog, she met her demise. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure I'm not saying the wrong thing. Concerning one of their friends. Then, later that morning, or about her and Jay cause of her death to be an aneurysm at the young age of 28, with these articles also recapping the rumours about Jay and Kathy's relationship, as well oh as my predicting God. Illuminati conspiracy theories that yeah. naturally would follow. This angle was also immediately predicted by the first commenters on Lipstick Alley, who had started their own threads reacting to the news, commenting that YouTube conspiracy videos must already be in the works. But other commenters were also quick to point out that Kathy's death so soon after Beyonce's pregnancy announcement did appear to be rather suspect. This would be followed by one user jokingly suggesting that Jay-Z had gotten Kathy murdered, as part of some sort of dark Illuminati ritual. And sure enough, the Illuminati and other conspiracy-minded people would soon enter the chat, slowly beginning to build a theory that Jay-Z had in fact gotten Kathy out the way, perhaps to stop her from exposing something major. One even more wild theory has circulated online that it was in fact Beyonce who arranged the murder of Jay-Z's mistress, with this theory being mainly based on lyrics to Beyonce's song Daughter, where she sings about her violent thoughts in the face of infidelity. And when you look at the lyrics of Daughter, they do paint a disturbing picture. From the first lyric, Beyonce sings about being covered in blood with a body 
laid out on a filthy floor. A possible reference to Kathy White's apartment being a mess, strewn with clothes, as was claimed in one of the Diary of a Street Kings articles, which cited former friend Claudia. In the song, Beyonce goes on to explain the crime scene, saying that a bathroom attendant let her in because she was a fan. Later on the song, seemingly hinting at her desires to even kill Jay-Z himself after saying she's bottled her feelings up like bottle service broads. Another interesting line when you remember the pictures from the party that Jay-Z and Kathy White attended, which depicted Kathy holding a bottle of champagne. Now, more um... level-headed conspiracy theorists have pointed out the simple fact that a healthy 28-year-old dropping dead from an aneurysm is incredibly unlikely, but not impossible. Others will no, ponder impossible. whether the famously ruthless Jay-Z would really do something this awful to protect his image. While some pointed out that in the midst of the mistress rumors, she had moved cities and begun- About that image thing, people would do anything to protect their image, bro. Like, as I get older, I realize, like, people are really, really frail and fragile on the inside. And they have to build up all of these walls and, you know, all of these defenses. Because inside, them just, you know, them going crumble, you know? They don't really love what's inside. So, yeah, they will go to extreme lengths to protect their image. Trust me. I believe that acting paranoid on Twitter. And of course, some tinfoil hat wearing commentators went off the deep end, calling this a human sacrifice. Although to be fair, most of the people on the forum in these early days would not find these conspiracies believable at all. But of course, nobody would come out as hard as our boy Jasper from Hollywood Street King, who would soon drop his now deleted blog post titled The True Story Surrounding the Death of Jay-Z's Mistress Kathy White. In the post, Jasper would claim that his source inside the NYPD this time had told him that Kathy's cause of Yo. death was at this point considered unknown and apparently suspicious. Suspicious. However, in Jasper's quote of what exactly the NYPD had told him, suspicious is shockingly nowhere to be found, with the police essentially explaining to him how the cause of death could not yet be confirmed as no autopsy or toxicology report had been conducted. Jasper would also mention that the police had told him that the address where the 911 call about Kathy came from was an apartment at 130 West 19th Street, and she was later taken to the Beth Israel Hospital where she passed away. Jasper would then move on to discussing what he had recently heard from his other sources, with one of these sources alleging these that Kathy sources. had recently been contacted by a journalist list from a major tabloid newspaper. And although she had apparently been tight-lipped about everything, she had then allegedly contacted Jay-Z to tell him she was planning on going public with their affair. Interestingly, as we'll learn a bit later, this part about Kathy being contacted no. by a journalist from a major tabloid soon before her death would indeed be seemingly confirmed as true by the journalist okay. herself many years later. With this being okay. yet another example of the ways that actual insider information in Jasper's reporting was seemingly getting randomly mixed in with sensationalist and what often appeared to be purely incorrect information. In the first <laughs> version of the blog that has only been saved on the Lipstick Alley thread concerning Kathy's death, Jasper would also appear to allege that he had been told that Kathy was a high-priced call cool girl, essentially an escort. However, Jasper would seemingly later oh, delete wow. this salacious claim, whilst alleging on Twitter that this information was about to come out through a major tabloid. Meanwhile, Kathy's friends on social media were also increasingly beginning to react to her death, reflecting on how short life can really be, and to the blogs, yeah. again labelling her as Jay-Z's alleged mistress, with Claudia in particular, who had seemingly been contacted by some of these blogs and other tabloid media, Damn. coming out strongly to deny that Kathy was ever intimately involved with Jay-Z, even going on to say that she was being stalked at the time and complaining that people were really digging into the rumours and she'd spend all day defending her fallen friend. Wow. Interestingly, Claudia's tweets would also reveal that her and Kathy had experienced a falling out at some point, as Claudia would explain how they'd had a phone call about a week before Kathy's death and resolved their what? misunderstanding. Misunderstand this revelation him. understandably raising some theories that the falling out might have happened as a result of the rumours beginning to spread about Kathy and Jay, and the allegations that Claudia had actually talked bad about Kathy behind her back, with one forum post suggesting that Claudia had badmouthed Kathy out of jealousy, even going on to suggest that Claudia had been the one who outed Kathy and Jay-Z's relationship, with that being a possible reason for their fallout. Soon there were also other bloggers with some wild theories, with one of these presenting a rumour that Jay-Z's old friend Emery Jones, whom Jay-Z had helped get released from prison by promising to hire him to his clothing brand Rockaware for a steady employment, might have been the person that had something to do with Kathy's death, with one article explaining how Jay-Z had contacted the judge to get Jones out of a 16-year prison sentence 37 months early with a promise of a 50,000 year job at Jay-Z's company. Jasper, wow. on the other hand, was only getting started and would soon come out with yet another post, this time doubling down on the claim that the mainstream media was preparing to take Jay-Z down, as well as discussing another long-held rumour that Jay-Z had already had a child with a woman from the Caribbean who oh he had paid God. to stay silent. He would also provide a quote from the tabloid who had contacted him with the journalist allegedly telling him that all of Kathy's friends, except Claudia, had indeed admitted that she had been in a relationship with Jay-Z, with the quote then ending with a casual question that you wouldn't expect 
expect to see in professional journalism, Jackie, do you know if Jay practices Satanism? The foul play angle was also gaining more popularity amongst the users of forums like the Lipstick Alley, with salacious posts suggesting that the aneurysm was used as a cover for the real cause of death, and a wild claim that Kathy had the same ring as Beyonce and that Jay-Z had bought a condo in New York City for a mystery woman, while other posters had their cake and ate it too, claiming that aneurysm-induced deaths have been used to cover up murders for years, also saying that Jay-Z is way too soft to be catching bodies. At this point, <laughs> only days after Kathy's untimely death, the writing was already on the wall, with the internet clearly becoming increasingly convinced there had been foul play and somehow Jay-Z had been involved. But interestingly, if Kathy's old online bituary that's still accessible via the Wayback Machine is to be believed, even an investigative journalist from the New York Post will try to get in contact with her family in the weeks following her death. Although this might just as well have been an online sleuth trying to fish more information whilst pretending to be an actual journalist, nevertheless, despite Jasper's claims that a major tabloid was looking into Kathy and Jay's relationship and were about to go public in a major way, with even a possible New York Post journalist attempting to- What I was going to say when it, when it, oh my god i just clicked back oh my god i'm so foolish what i was going to say when they um showed the woman and said oh trinidad and tobago i was like yeah that makes sense i can see a caribbean woman you pay her a couple 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 million yeah man she shut up for the rest of her life man to kathy and jay's she, relationship she not need to see you again oh i'm oh, oh, is you Chip and were about to go public in a major way, with even a possible New York Post journalist attempting to get in contact with Kathy's family to look into the death, in the months and years following her passing, no major articles would ever come out, and the story would only stay alive in the gossip and conspiracy forums in the blogosphere. At times, this story has gained more momentum, like in 2016, when Kanye West would do the infamous speech on stage in Sacramento, where he would claim that Jay-Z had killers. The rumours were eventually also dug up by content creators on platforms like YouTube and TikTok <laughs> coming into the late 2010s and early 2020s. However, in late 2023, the case would suddenly get a huge new boost, as another hip-hop mogul ended up getting in hot water, with the implication being that if he went down, he'd be taking Jay-Z with him. What in the dark, I come out in the light. You send me young girl, you send me too bright. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, as P. Diddy's dark escapades begun truly hitting the internet with force in late 2023, following the explosive lawsuit by his ex Cassie, these rumours and allegations would eventually begin to affect also those people close to him, particularly Jay-Z. One of the people going hardest against Jay-Z was none other than one of his toughest competitors during the 2000s, and one of the hardest trolls to appear from New York's rap scene, 50 Cent, who would begin to post on social media following Diddy's downfall about how Jay-Z was nowhere to be found when his supposed friend needed support, with 50 Cent clowning Jay-Z with a post showing Jay-Z's picture as a missing poster on a milk carton and a caption saying Diddy says Jay isn't answering his phone. And as another post showing an unflattering picture of Jay-Z's iconic lips, along with a caption saying Jay is in hibernation is not coming out the house until the situation with Diddy blows over, as well as seemingly referencing the cancellation of Jay-Z's infamous Rock Nation brunch, with perhaps the subliminal implication being that Jay-Z was also afraid of his own skeletons coming out next. Meanwhile, well as mentioned Jay-Z is reportedly cancelled ahead of 2024 Grammy. And it did it is it still cancelled? When does it happen? I don't keep up with those things. I don't know when that happens or whatever. Is it still cancelled? Location being that Jay-Z was also afraid of his own skeletons coming out next. Meanwhile, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, the singer Jaguar Wright, who used to work with Jay-Z for a moment as a backup singer in the 2000s, was now all over the internet attacking Jay, with her undeniably entertaining interviews, where she would claim to expose all kinds of dark secrets yep, I about her all of colleagues, which ultimately Not this one. Sorry, not all of them. You want to know what makes Diddy being publicly shamed like this so so left? What's that? Sean Carter is worse. Uh oh. Oh man. Sean Carter is just as bad as the Diddler. Just as bad as the. Diddler. And I know that for a fact. I got the scars to prove it. Got the scars to oh. prove it. <laughs> so. This That's the thing, she's so dramatic in her interviews as well. It's like, you want to say, so tell me more. Just like, why you stop talking? Keep performing. She says everything's so dramatic. Sean Carter is worse than the Diddler. I got the scars to prove it. I'm going to say, yo, am I watching a movie or an interview? Give me more. Encore. Give me more. I want more. There's been so many people on the internet trying to figure out where you are. They're watching you. They're, you know, they're sex, going sex. all types of stuff trying to figure you, you out. You want to know what a box cutter feels like going into your skin and ripping you? you oh, she's showing you what you show. She's showing us where. Oh. 
what it feels like going into your skin and dripping you? Let me tell you how it feels. Y'all ain't seen shit yet. No, no. That can't see shit, that's nothing. That's nothing? So are you are you are you trying to say that's like they put hands on you? I'm saying Sean Carter remembers everything he did to me and he's got it on too. Just like Diddy. <laughs> No, 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 no. Why does she do those little giggles? Like, oh, it's like the world is a perf the world is a stage. Perform. Perform. Just like Diddy. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be the women that get them in the end. So you say that um that Jay Jay Z and I think it's time for him to start speaking up about his very good friend. I was going to say that, bro. Like, you see, I don't want to get too mystical, bro, or too, like, crazy in my speech, bro. But, like, just from a nature's perspective and the universe and stuff, bro, like, the women bring life to the universe. They're what life comes through the portal through them to come through the universe to come into here to experience life right they don't come through me nothing can come through me they might have come through. so i feel like the universe like get gives you like karma when you don't treat women right you know what i mean i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know, I don't know. maybe i'm wrong just nine months ago you were singing his praises all that he's done for the culture. I've never sang his praises. Be crazy like Diddy to make it. I've never Diddy sang their praises. Never liked them. Never liked them. Never liked Drake. Told everybody that he had cooties and canceled the Rock Nation brunch. Oh yeah, cancel for true then. Which is your favorite event? Facts. Cause that's how you line up who you gonna use around, bitch. Yeah, bet. Like y'all did with Clarence Avon. Come, come get you. And I told you I would. And I'm going to keep my word. And you're going to pay me in full. In one such interview with the Real Life Productions channel, Wright would even go on to claim that Kathy had been murdered by a woman and that Diddy had a video of the murder. Last question. I asked you to do this earlier, but I just want you to do it even more and go detail. What do you predict will happen next in the future? You, you know, it's like you see it before it happens. Kathy White's true killer is going to be unveiled, and it's not a man, and that woman died screaming. Show him the tape, Diddy, you got it. That might buy you a little time. You should probably stop looking for plastic surgeons, <laughs> looking for a new life, new face. But Wright wasn't the only one coming out with some very serious allegations, because in March 2024, a journalist named Liz Crokin would come- She looks like she has a new life, a new face. She looked like one of, she looked like an actor. I'm out claiming that she had been in contact. I was gonna say, bro, like this whole this ending of this the part this part of the video, yeah, it's very dark. With Kathy in the weeks leading up to her death, whilst working for the major tabloid Star Magazine, pretty much exactly like Jackie Jasper had claimed only days after Kathy's passing in 2011, and that Kathy had first denied ever hanging out with Jay Z. After the journalist confronted her with the photos from that night in Vegas, she would eventually imply that she was ready to go public with her relationship with Jay. And in her 2024 Substack article titled Jay-Z, Murder and the Mistress, the journalist would also claim that following Kathy's death, she would hear from sources that Kathy had told Jay she had planned to go public about their relationship, and that she had run a small story about Kathy in the Star magazine in 2011, but after wanting to do a follow-up piece, her boss had shut her down. The article that Crokin is likely referring to is probably this one appearing in Star magazine's September 26, 2011 issue, where Crokin mainly focuses on the rumour regarding Jay and his alleged son, with a model from the Caribbean named Chanel Scott, but she also has a small additional mention about the death of Kathy. And I would pause and look at that, bro, but it's like that's not what we're here for, and it's it's not that far fetched out of my imagination. This happens in Jamaica all the time, so happening in Trinidad, I do I do doubt it. Caribbean named Chanel Scott, but she also has a small additional mention about the death of Kathy and her alleged relationship with Jay. However, already in 2017. Crokin would imply on her Twitter that she thought Jay's killers that Kanye had mentioned in his infamous rant on stage in Sacramento were the same killers who might Shorty have taken out Kathy, this showing that Crokin had clearly been she believing and investigating snitching. this angle for years. Indeed, in her Substack article, Crokin would also allege that years after publishing her original article mentioning Kathy, sources who knew both Kathy and Jay-Z would tell her that they strongly believed that Jay-Z had gotten Kathy 
be killed, and that he even had coroners in his back pocket that he could bribe to fake the cause of death. Croakin would also refer to a 2020 gossip blog about an A-list host slash model I don't want to believe it, man. Be Claudia Jordan, allegedly claiming that she had come to the conclusion that an A-plus list rapper had killed her friend, with this likely being a reference to Jay-Z and Kathy White. However, a Jordan plus herself has publicly list? seemingly never even hinted at coming to such a conclusion, and even her more recent mentions about Jay, such as her commentary on the Fox Soul streaming platform where she's a host, have seemingly been very neutral towards him. Also, do you guys under, um, think that, and this is also just like, just to throw this out there, as far as Jay-Z, like, it, it could be he's afraid, right? Or it could also be he's a huge star and a target. He succumbed to this paternity test. Like, how many other people want to come out and waste time and get attention off of his name? Because, you know, he's a there's, a there's probably a million girls that can say, oh, I have a picture with Jay-Z. I messed around with them or whatever. You know, that might be kind of frustrating. Crokin would then end her Substack article by going through some other related factors, such as claiming that during the 2011 times, Star Magazine was getting constantly contacted with tips about Jay-Z's different mistresses. As oh well as God. a rumor that Jay's friend Diddy has also been accused of murdering his ex, Kim Porter, the disturbing allegations well, we that, that in the Diddy video. Diddy's well, I watched that in the Diddy Rod, video. As well as going through statements made by people like Jaguar Wright and listing Jay's previous encounters with the law, such as his stabbing of the producer Lance Riviera in 1999. Oh my God. Also covered in a previous video four years ago, check that out if you want to know the story. But at the very end, Crokin would seemingly dive off the deep end, as she would dip into infamous conspiracy theories regarding people like Hillary Clinton's former campaign manager John Podesta, and the performance artist Marina Abramovich, who she claims to be Jay-Z's good friend. Now this is certainly not a political video, and with Marina Abramovich Finally, let's not forget that Jay-Z is pals with satanic witch Marina Abramovich, who we learn conducts demonic spirit cooking rituals invol involving blood, Something that we cannot show on YouTube. And milk. Don't forget your calcium. <laughs> ...who she claims to be Jay-Z's good friend. Now, this is certainly not a political video. And whether or not you believe in conspiracy theories or not, is, that's your business. But with the goal of practicing responsible content creation in mind, it's certainly relevant to cover this part of Crokin's journalism, because she's certainly no ordinary tabloid journalism. And in fact, she hasn't been one for some time now. In recent years, long since leaving behind tabloid magazines like The Star, Liz Crokin has become particularly known as a conspiracy theorist and devoted Trump supporter, who's gained great prominence amongst America's right-wing political circles by promoting conspiracies like Pizzagate and QAnon. I don't trust her personally, but you know, it's up to you. I don't even end, know what those we'll are. I never know what truly happened. What with is a pizza gate and Q and her untimely death in 2011? And for legal and safety reasons, it's important what for me is to that? end this video by saying, despite all my research into these rumors, I personally have not seen any concrete evidence that Kathy White was murdered. I don't personally believe Jay-Z and Beyonce are responsible. And everything we've discussed in this video pretty much has been salacious rumors from dubious sources, many of which we've proven in this video to be actually false. This whole thing is a conspiracy theory, and likely the result of people looking for a salacious story in what in reality was probably just a freak health incident that was very unlikely but entirely possible. In fact, when it comes to brain aneurysms, although most people affected are over 40, women, particularly African American and Hispanic women, still have an elevated risk of suffering one. These things do happen. But whatever did transpire, perhaps the saddest thing in this entire story is that Kathy White was a real person with a real family, friends, and a career, and what seemed like a bright future ahead of her. <clears throat> she was clearly an intelligent and confident young woman who had graduated from an esteemed university and created a seemingly successful life for herself in the world of entertainment in Los Angeles, where most people attempting the same thing will likely fail. She made it, as well as later also seemingly succeeding in New York. Yet all that seems to be left of her now is the rumor of her being Jay-Z's alleged mistress. A very unfair outcome. So rest in peace to Kathy White, a bright young soul who had her whole life ahead of her. Another reminder that no matter what happens, life is precious and we can go at any minute. So make the most of it and stop believing crazy conspiracy theories. Hope you found that story interesting. I've been Traplaw Ross. Until next time, peace out. Peace out. No, great video. Very informative. Very documentative. You know, in nature. I like the information and how it was presented to me. I love it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? It's just a conspiracy, bro. But Jaguar right? She's on to something. Because she was talking about Diddy before the Diddy and Cassie thing came out. Like, literally. She was talking about it way before it came out. She was talking about, you know, not that specific thing, but she was like, of course, yeah, she was talking about that too. She was talking about everything. And now it's all coming to light. You know what I mean? And Cat Williams, he said, Diddy loves to party. And you got to tell him no. And so like, so, like, everybody's been talking. 
But that story just isn't true. But them still not get to it though. Them still not get to it. We're on to them. We're gonna figure we're gonna we're gonna figure out what's going on. Anyway, I'm out. <laughs>